All right, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you my, to my team for wishing me a happy birthday. Of course, um, uh, in as much as I'm grateful, you know, the country is really in a setting uh, mood this morning, but I take all that in. Thank you guys for uh, doing that. Now let's get started. My guest is uh, joining me virtually is Mr. Wali Ajayi. He's the partner head tax regulatory and people services at KPMG. Mr. Ajayi, good morning and good to see you again. It's been a while, welcome. Yes, thank you so much, Nancy, and it's good to be here. Let me add, join others to wish you happy birthday also. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Th thank you very much. You know, what a birthday within this period. Um, let me start by asking you, walk me through your reaction of um, Sunday's speech by the president. Um, I think there's a movie called The President's Speech, too, you know. Um, I, I guess that's the name of the movie, if I'm not mistaken. There's a movie <laughs> called the, the American President and the President's Speech, isn't it? No, okay, it's the King's Speech. It's the King's Speech. Yeah, I know about the King's Speech. Yes, the, 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 yes, <laughs> yeah. the King's Speech. But walk me through your reaction and do tell me if indeed Mr. President addressed the real issues yesterday. I mean, to be, to be honest, right, everybody was quite expectant, and I'm sure that nearly everybody, you know, listened to that speech by the president. And I really empathize with this government, you know, given the challenges and the headwinds that they face, right? The fact of the matter is that Nigerians are hungry, right? So we spoke about food inflation earlier on in one of your segments of the, of the program. When if we have food inflation at about 40%, and you have composites um, called CPI, you know, at about 34%, that is pretty expensive. The cost of living is extremely high. So people were highly expectant that uh, government, I mean, or the president will address some of the issues that, um, you know, uh, they're dealing with. But unfortunately, I mean, as you, I mean, as you've heard from other segments, I mean, there's, there have been mixed reactions to what the president, you know, spoke about. And for me, uh, like I said, I empathize with this government. I mean, the government ruled out so many achievements of what they have done. I'm sure we're going to dive, in, dive into that later on. But I, I think the problem is, you know, in terms of uh, getting the Nigerians to be aware of exactly what is happening. And there are certain things that if people wanted to hear from the president's speech that was not addressed. You know, if you're asking the Nigerians to tighten their beds, then you have to also have to look at the cost of governance in Nigeria. We have to look at transparency in Nigeria. Those were issues that were not addressed in that uh, in that in that speech. It's all well and good for the president, you know, to say that um, income revenue in Nigeria has gone up. In fact, has tripled. We're looking at about nine trillion in revenue as at half year. But what he did not talk about is deficit. You know, where were we with respect to expenditure? Right, income has gone up, but what about expenditure? So there's so many issues that government are looking at. What are the stimulus packages? You know, there's so many things that the president spoke about that they're doing. But the problem is there isn't that much awareness of, you know, of who is benefiting from this. Because, I mean, when you ask people around, nobody can actually point to someone that has benefited, you know, from these stimulus packages. And that is really where we have a problem. There is a gap. There is a deficit gap, information gap between what the president is saying and what people are feeling in their pocket and in their belly. And I think that is what is missing, you know, from the president's speech. So the president needs to speak more. I think he probably should have spoken before the protest started, not after the protest has started, right? And so people reacted to that because they were expecting something much more that the president did not address. Mm. Um, if you take a look at when the president spoke, of course, this um, protest started on August 1 and the president spoke on August 4. Was it a little too late? And perhaps even what the president did say, of course, I don't know if you were watching earlier on our correspondence that I took, uh, you know, some kind of protest is still going on in Lagos, precisely or Jota. Um, here in Abuja, high security presence uh, all, all over the city. So there's still this kind of dissatisfaction from Nigerians that the president did not attend to us. Perhaps he spoke to himself. Or like the Yorubas will say, you're Yoruba, so you understand. Omog Bajen see me. <laughs> Let me translate it. I beg, collect, make I rest. You know, so uh, perhaps that was the body language of the president uh, yesterday. What do you have to say about that? 
I think, you know, there's so many headwinds we are, you know, we're facing in Nigeria. And obviously, it's not only Nigeria alone. I mean, if you look at the U.S., it's the same thing that is happening in the U.K., cost of living, even though theirs is coming down a bit. Inflation also is being tamed in Nigeria. At least you can see what the CPN is doing. And inflation, even though it's going up, but it's going up at a decreasing rate. So what that tells me is that uh, those policies they put in place, you know, are working, but it's going to take time. But the question is, you know, how much time, you know, you, you know, are we willing to give to this government? And people need to see signs that this government actually means business. You know, I spoke about transparency. I think the biggest challenge that people cannot, you know, relate to it is that government speaks about the need for us to tighten our belts. Government speaks about the need for us to be patient, right? But they can't see what government is also doing on the path to reduce the cost of governance. And so when you look at what the government is saying and what they're doing, there appears to be a disconnect that many Nigerians cannot relate with or relate to. But I empathize with them. I think the president, you know, should have spoken much earlier. I think he needs to be, you know, communicating with Nigerians much more. And, you know, people need to really understand what exactly is happening. I think it's only the government, it's only the president that can tell or that can sell himself to Nigerians, not through the advice to the president on information and what have you. We need to see the president more talking about what they're doing. I mean, when the president was, speak, was speaking, he spoke about, about 29 policy announcements and certain achievements that they made, they, right, they've recorded, that I'm sure that most Nigerians are not aware of because they can't feel it in their purse, I mean, in their belly or in their wallet or, or, or purse, right? I mean, government needs to address, you know, the cost of living in Nigeria. People are hungry. And that is a fact. And how do we deal with that issue? People need, you know, something to cushion the impact of the policies that the government has put in place. But we all realize that, look, those the impact of those policies will take time, you know, to you know to be felt by people. And we need to be patient. But the question is, how much time are Nigerians willing to give? And this is where we need the president to speak much more, you know, and address the nation on a on a proactive basis not on the reactive basis. I felt that the speech was more reactive, and I think that was why, you know, the protest has continued, you know, even this week. You know, for me, when I listened to the president yesterday, for me, my own analysis was that, okay, there's nothing different from what the, his aides or his policies has been over the months, telling us why fuel subsidy removal is necessary, CNG buses are available, but we are not seeing it. The, the striking thing, the only different, the thing that was different for me yesterday was that when he talked about 570 billion naira has been given to states as livelihood support, that was something new that I've not heard in terms of, oh, when did these governors get this money and they are all quiet about it? Then the area of, um, um, you know, the revenue in terms of 9.1 trillion naira has come. What else again did the president say that was not new to me? So for me, it's, it's a matter of justifying what the president said as against the, uh, the demands of the protesters. So the president was just coming to rehash. It was like an October 1 speech, for example, <laughs> you know, that, okay, uh, yeah, or any other speech, but not a speech of exigence, you know. Well, I agree with you. I mean, there is, I mean, there are some new things that the president actually did that allude to in his speech, but I think there's a disconnect again. I think it still boils down to information gap. I mean, he spoke about the one billion naira they've given to large multinational manufacturing companies in Nigeria, right, to boost output. And the question is, whoa, which companies are these? No, Nobody but that would be that. part of that. Would that would this? I assume that that one billion naira each. Sorry to cut you short would be from the yeah. 75 billion naira which the president did mention i think in the july 30 uh, broadcast last year i i hope you remembered he he addressed yeah. nigerians when i think this cost of living crisis started permeating our environment so he did mention mm -hmm. that time 75 billion but what we are now what we will find out is if indeed these large manufacturers have gotten that because the last time i spoke with the dg of manufacturer association of nigeria months ago there was nothing. They had not even assessed it. That's that's the problem. Okay, but let's even speak about the one billion. Let's even assume the one billion that single digit load was you know was provided to large manufacturing companies. But we need to first understand you know what is driving you know the what is the cost of the manufacturing issues that we have in Nigeria today. I mean the the composite uh, uh, purchasers managers index has just been released and there is a contraction. 
you know, uh, we're below 50%, is about 49%, right? We've got to look at the issues that manufacturers are facing. Number one, I mean, which is obvious is power. Power is an issue. Number two, cost of interest, cost of borrowing is an issue. Access to Forex is an issue. So there's so many issues that are facing. So the way I look at it is the question of transparency and carrying people along and telling us there is indeed an information gap. Look at the, the, the comment that the president made about this Nigerian education student loan. That about 46 billion naira, you mm -hmm. know, is being processed, you know, for that. And that is going to add on top of that another 50 billion naira. And then, you know, and the question is, look, I mean, I've tried to go onto the portal. Some people have applied to the portal. All they will say to you is that, oh, well, they have been verified, but nothing has happened. They've not heard anything, right? So I, I, I think the, 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 the disconnect is in, you know, what the press or what the government is saying and what is actually on ground. And I think they, they need to do much more, you know, talking about, you know, what they're doing and also being transparent. Because you know, at the end of the day, it's about transparency. If you and I cannot point to what to whoever has benefited, we talk about the stimulus packages, right? I mean, the other day we spoke about the you know forty thousand naira for bag of rice, fifty kg rice, mm. right? But the question is, is the rice currently available, or is it going to be made available? But the way it was presented is that it's already been made available, so there is a gap, and people are asking. But I can't see anybody who has already benefited from this, and so the president, I mean, the government has to be much more transparent you know, in their communication, they need to do a better job, you know, at communicating, you know, what the achievements are and what is in plan. But the fact of the matter is that Nigerians, we need to be patient. But again, the question is, for how long can we be patient? Mm. For how long are resilience um, and elasticity, elasticity is so stretched now? Yeah. Um, our patient's capital is very, very thin. If we mm -hmm. still take a look at what the president uh, did say, on a Sunday, uh, you're looking at, for me, another surprising and yet interesting stuff for me is that the president said that they are going to cultivate 10 million hectares of land. The last time I yes. checked, the federal government does not have authority over lands in the country, is the state. And this yes. same president also announced in July of last year that 500 hectares of land will be cultivated when he put together uh, an emergency food committee they did say that, that they will uh, cultivate 500,000 hectares of food to tackle food inflation. I'm not getting anything from that. And now the president on Sunday did say 10 million hectares of land. Is it that he has uh, uh, communicated with the governors? Where are the 10 million uh, hectares of lands now? I hope you understand what I'm saying. So is he just telling us something to just tell us just to talk? You know, the way I look at it is that I think the government, the president announces this policy, right? I'm not sure that um, it's um, all the things, all the processes that they need to put in place have already been put in place. That is the way I look at it. So there is a gap. Now, I do agree with the president that we need to have some sort of governance issues when it comes to land, especially when you look at the fact that in Nigeria, land is fragmented. Right, you know, I mean, you have all small passes of land here and there. You need to have them, you know, concentrated, right? So we need to have that. We need to secure land right, you know, for, for farmers. But the biggest issue for me is you can do all those things. What about security? You know, you we need to find out, you know, how do we protect the farmers, you know, from all the attacks, you know, that we're seeing. Then, of course, there is also the issue of infrastructure, right? Even if you cultivate all the, all the land, you have all the crops. Harvest is coming in, in October and November. We know that a significant portion of the harvest is lost, you know, to storage and transport issues in Nigeria. So we need to look at that. How do we ensure that we're able to invest in infrastructure so that we can even, you know, protect the harvest that, you know, we have, right? Of course, we've spoken about the need that government is trying to reduce, I mean, re remove uh, import duty, you know, on some staple foods, right? You know, just, you know, for six months, just to be able to reduce food inflation. When you have a situation for the inflation is at 40 percent right there is i mean it's that is high right and that is something that we really need you know to do we've got to invest definitely agriculture is some area that we need to invest in 
we have to promote R and D in agriculture. We have to promote innov innovative service. I mean, practices in agriculture. We need to get youth into into in, in, you know into our farms. We need to get public and private sector into agriculture. He spoke about even in his president's speech. He spoke about tractors and you know some equipment that they're importing, right? Mm. But all those things will fail into insignificance if we do not address the security issue that the farmers are facing. So what will actually bring down the cost of living? Because part of the demands of the protesters is that let fuel subsidy be reversed, removal be reversed. And I did analyze that even on the show last Friday with, with my guests, because that is the only language that many Nigerians will understand economically, that if you bring down the price of fuel, food price will automatically go down. And that's it. You know, there's a reason to that as it were. Um, in some parts of the country, in many parts of the country, a liter of fuel is going for over a thousand naira. I was speaking with someone this morning, and she told me that a liter of fuel goes for a thousand naira in where she, in, uh, in in the southeast state. So you can imagine how can somebody buy ten liters of fuel with ten thousand naira in this economy? You know, don't give me about minimum wage is seventy k. You know, I had, yeah. So if is it ten liters that will be enough for your for your car, then let alone the cost of food. Food inflation is at 40, over 40 percent. I know that Cardoso is trying to raise interest rate rate, and I raised it with him at the MPC meeting the last time, yes. two, two weeks uh, ago. Yes. You know that mm -hmm. I don't know what you are doing. Is it about raising interest rates? But I also understand their challenges as a monetary authority. So if someone is buying 10 liters of fuel for 10k, let me even say the Okada or the Keke, let me put it that way. For the tricycles. Ten, yes, will 10 liters of fuel be, fuel be able to take you through the day to carry your passengers or even a car? Then you now buy food. Gary itself is not cheap. So, what will really bring down the cost of living crisis? Let me now also go to power. Power is yeah. another thing for those of us. Anyway, it's, uh, band A now has even increased. They've even used style to increase the price. <laughs> but I, you know, so, and you're also seeing another thing is that there's energy theft also going on because yeah. energy prices have gone on. So I'm just seeing what's the opportunity cost of all of that. So I'd like you to comment on that. What will really bring down this cost of living crisis? Okay. Uh, let me, let me say once and for all, I mean, firstly, I support the president decision, you know, to remove subsidy. Nobody benefits from subsidy, right? We've never benefited from subsidy. So which subsidy I mean, do just, we now have as Nigerians? No, you know, I, 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 all over the world. You work for KPMG. I, That's a global yes. consulting firm. The U.S., for example, uh, is the father of subsidies. The U.K., Italy, Spain, they have subsidies even for their farmers. We shouldn't paint it that yes. subsidies are also bad. Yes, we're not, nobody is saying that subsidy is bad. The problem is where you direct your subsidy. We're directing subsidy to consumption rather than production, because that's the biggest problem. So uh, with the issue that we have, I mean, for the first time, if you look at the amount of money that FARC has distributed, for the first time, it's been, uh, it's been, it's been on, on, the, on the increase since subsidy was removed. The question is, what are the states doing with the money, with the enhanced money that they've collected? So I, I, I don't support the removal of subsidy. But even as I'm, I'm sorry, the, the retention of the, um, the, for us to return to subsidy. But even now, even as I'm saying this to you, I mean, currently crude oil price per barrel is about $75, mm -hmm. right? It's over around $80 for the past um, couple of weeks. But then there's subsidy, right? Even though government has not said it, government is still saying that subsidy, mm -hmm. subsidy has been removed. But we know that subsidy is still there, right? But we know that the only way we can be efficient and we can create an efficient market is for us to remove subsidy and divert the proceeds into infrastructure. We need to be able to create a conducive environment in Nigeria. Now, speaking specifically about your question with respect to, to food inflation, I mean, like I've said, food inflation is about 40%, according to MBS, mm. right? I think what we can do, we know that between now and November, the prices of goods may come down, right? Because of the harvest that is expected. We're, we're expecting bumper harvest, Hopefully, we can preserve the harvest and we can transport the, you know, the harvest to where it is needed so the prices might come down. But that's a short-term issue. Okay. We need to be thinking about long-term. Like, when you look at agri, agri contributes close to about 25% to our GDP, but the growth rate from the agri sector has declined. You know, it's less than about 2%, right? So there's something that we need to do. We need to think okay. long-term. But I think the biggest challenge we have in Nigeria today okay, is that even though it announces a lot of stimulus packages, Mr. Jai, can you hear me? 
Okay, it seems the network just froze on us. Uh, Mr. Jai. Feel the impact of the reforms being put in place by government. Okay. Okay, Mr. Jai, I think we'll continue this our conversation another day. Thank you very much uh, for joining Thank us. You, and, and for your Thank insight you. and for your insights this morning. I've been speaking Thank with, you, and happy birthday to you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, sir. I've been speaking with Mr. Wali Ajayi, who is the partner head, tax regulatory and people services at KPMG. Be the best you can be and do the change that you want to see. I am Nancy Naji. Please join us again tomorrow for another edition. Bye now.